Hello and welcome to the Easy Solution Systems tutorial videos. I'm Jesse Brown and today we'll be going through stock adjustment in Retail Man. In this video we're going to look at stock wastage such as when we have expired stock, stolen stock, broken stock, etc. and also dealing with returns or refunds. Firstly, for stock wastage, we need to go to stock and stock quantity adjustments. We press enter on zero to take it to the next number up. Then from the drop down, we do stock quantity adjustment. We enter the date and then enter the details. So we'll say damaged stock, for example. And then we enter 9212, which is the stock wastage account. Let's enter an item. So item number five, the quantity now has to be in minus because we're taking out stock from our storage. Let's say we damage two items, we'll put in negative two. Make sure you have the cost there as well. And of course you can add in any other item that was damaged or wasted. Let's do negative one here. Once you've done what you need to do, go to save. When you save this, the system will adjust the stock quantity on hand based on what we've entered in negative. The other option is to do a stock return. So you can do that from either the point of sale or from the invoice, same thing applies. Let's say someone comes in and buys one large coffee, three small coffees and two cupcakes and pays. Then the client comes back and says he wants to return something. Let's say one of the cupcakes. So what we need to do is enter the quantity in minus. You can either type in the quantity from the menu or type it in within the quantity column. So we can do negative one and then click on the cupcake. And as you can see, the total has become negative $4 or negative two for the small coffees. We can also do a normal sale so as we do a return, you can either keep it as is and pay them the amount that we owe them now. Let's just return the amount, pay and keep it as cash, matching the amount exactly. We can also do a return as well as sell at the same time. So minus cupcake and add other items. This way it'll minus the amount they are returning and add the amount they are buying, which means they just owe the difference. The other way we can do this is from the invoice screen for any client. Say the client comes and buys five of these items and buys another. Let's say he pays for it. We'll save it. The client then comes back and says he wants to return the item because it's an invoice, which is the same as the point of sale, it has to again be negative. So we'll enter the client's name or code again, the items, and the best thing to do is enter the reference number. Let's say number 44, so we know what they're talking about. Here we'll enter the amount as negative one, so we can process that now or add more stuff if they choose to buy. You must enter the quantity as a negative because we are doing it as an invoice, which is the same as the point of sale. The other way of doing it, where if we go back to the same invoice, we can either change it back to the amount. There are a couple of problems with this. Firstly, it won't keep a record of what happened regarding the client coming back. And secondly, we also have a problem with the amount paid, which won't be correct because it will look like the client has overpaid. Instead, we can keep quantity at five, enter the part number in again, and set the quantity to negative one, which is a better way of doing it. Otherwise, you'll have to do it through a separate invoice. The other option is to do a credit note, which is a return. So we can do a return now for the same client. But in the item that's being returned, 
On the credit note, the quantity has to be in a positive, unlike the point of sales or invoice. This will take the quantity out even though it says it's positive $8 because it's actually taking out the stock due to it being a different transaction. Some countries will require you to do that because it's based on their tax laws. Just remember to enter the negative quantities in the point of sales and invoice or negative quantities in credit note. If you try to put in a negative quantity for the credit note, it will actually add to the stock. Notice we have a quantity of 68, having a quantity of one, and then saving will increase the stock count by one. If we save and re-enter the item, the quantity on the hand has gone from 68 to 69. The same thing applies if we do a purchase. You can return stuff using a negative quantity under the purchase, or if you do a purchase return, quantity has to be in positive. Suppose we go and buy item 6. This item will be added to the stock, but if we do negative 5, this will be taken out from the stock and back to the supplier. If we do it from the purchase return, then the negative 5 will need to be made positive. I hope this video has been helpful, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.